Shalom. Before I get started with this lesson, I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Makar Kodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught me this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect out there laboring on and believe in the name of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Makar Kodash, to USA Shalom. This is the brother Amawan from the GMS Charlotte camp. Coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah Bashem, Makar Kodash. And I'm going to title this lesson, Many Israelites Will Die. Okay? Many Israelites will be destroyed when Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah issues out this great judgment that is prophesied to take place in the coming future, in the near future. Okay? And as you see on the screen, this is a perfect description of the Israelites, you know, that are meant to be destroyed. Okay. You know, you majority of you people have seen us, you know, uh, with the chart, you know, out at the campsite, man. Okay. The one third and the two third sign. But, you know, this picture just further goes into detail on how few Israelites are going to be saved out here, man. All right? Now, it says one-third, only 33.3% .3 of Israelites will be saved. It says, and two-thirds, which you know, the one-third and the 144,000 prophets, you know, is the elect that's going to be delivered out of here, according to Zechariah 13 and 9, which I'll get in a little bit. But, it says two thirds or sixty six point six percent of Israelites shall die. Now we understand the scriptures tell you, matter of fact, I'm gonna just let the scriptures tell you itself. One second. Because that's a lot of Israelites that are going to be destroyed, man. Alright. So give me one second. All right, this is the book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 10. It says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the land where it is said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of, of the living power. Right, so it says, that the nation of Israel, all right, is as the sand of the sea. Now, we know it is billions upon billions of particles of sand, you know, that you see, you know, with the oceans and whatnot, man, you know. So, the good majority of the planet is made up of Israelites, man. All right, we have been scattered all throughout the four corners of the earth, man, so... Whether the Israelites look like your average so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, or you know how we've been, you know, mingled amongst the uh, the nations, the Israel, you got the Israelite foreigners, but Israel is the biggest nation on the planet now, man. All right. It says, "Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it is said unto them." You are not my people. And that place is talking about here in the land of America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. Because in this land, when we were brought over here, you know, in, in chattel slavery, our, our identity, our nationality was beaten out of us as prophesied, you know, in uh, Zechariah, you know, uh, uh, for, matter of fact, I always butcher it. So I'm going to just get it. I believe it's uh, Jeremiah 17 and 4. Yeah, Jeremiah 17 and 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. All right? So we were prophesied to pretty much fall away from our heritage, man. And like I said, that happened 
when we were brought over here to the land of America and our heritage was beaten out of us, man. All right. So that fulfills this prophecy. We said that back in Hosea 1 and 10, it shall come to pass that in the day, it's like in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people. Right. Because the Lord casted us away, man. All right. He cast us away and he turned his back to us. So we, we lost our nationality. We lost who we were. We, we forgot who our power was, you know. It says, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. And that's how we know that this is talking about the land of America. Because in this land where we will, you know, deem proverbs and bywords, you know, call all type of different names, niggas, spicks, negro, colored. Native American, Cherokee, Latino, and so on, man. You know, now you having our people waking back up to who we are as the Israelites, and we're proclaiming, hey, we're Judah, Benjamin, Levi, you know, Simeon, Zebulon, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Naphtali, Asher, Issachar, our true nationalities, man. All right, we are reclaiming our heritage, and these heathens are seeing these, uh, you know, these things taking place. And now they're afraid because prophecy is, is bringing us, you know, uh, prophecy is coming to pass that is bringing us back to remembrance, man. All right, let me get a, a quick precept. All right, this is the book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people, but in the land of their captivity sh they shall remember themselves and and our people are, are still to this day, you know, trying to remain, you know, stubborn and ignorant to the fact of who they are, man. You know, clinging to Christianity, clinging to Islam, you know, Pan-Africanism, Nuwabian and whatever these, you know, Jakes are calling themselves, you know, uh, Moors and whatnot. But you got the vast majority of our people are waking up to accept the fact that hey, they're Israelites, man. That's the talk. That's been the talk of the town for the last few years, man, to where this word has pretty much went out and reached up to the gates of the nobles, man. All right, these elites are, are noticing, you know, the great awakening, man. These celebrities are speaking about the truth, you know, your average everyday Jake, you know, from the man, woman, and child are speaking about the Israelites, man, you know. So that shows you that this prophecy has to be t uh, talking about you so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Americans because the Lord is beginning to pour his spirit out through his men, all right, to wake you people up. And then the point being that two-thirds, even though all this nauseous understanding is going out, they are still in a state of rebellion. They are still in a state of wanting to stay lost, man. And, and this reason alone is why the Most High is going to destroy two-thirds of the nation of Israel, man. All right, so let's get to Zechariah since it's already been quoted, okay? It says, Zechariah 13 and 8, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, say of the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein, all right? So as I mentioned earlier, the scriptures tell you that the nation of Israel was at the sand of the sea that cannot be measured nor numbered. But the Lord said he was going to cut off two-thirds of the nation of Israel. So putting that in perspective, man, that's 66.6% .6 of the nation of Israel, which when you break it down as this, as this picture beautifully did, it says only one out of every three Negro, Latino, and Native Americans will be saved. All right? That's a lot of depth that's going out, all right? So there's more Israelites that are going to die than be saved, man, all right? And there's no nice way of saying that, man. It's just the truth, all right? This is prophecy that two-thirds of the nation of Israel must die on this side. But the beautiful thing about it is that they're going to be reborn in their right mind in the kingdom of heaven. But on this side... Due to their rebellious and stiff-necked nature, all right, they want to stay, you know, separated from the Lord. And we understand that the Most High is looking to be worshipped. And two-thirds will not fulfill that lot, man. All right, because they want to stay 
in the congregation of the dead. All right. Which the proof of that real quick. This is Proverbs 21 and 16. It says the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So when once you go away from the law, statute, and commandments of Yahweh by Shem Yahusha, once you, you know, uh, put off the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Lord, all right, you are now in the congregation of the dead. You are spiritually dead, which is why you see our people in the state that you see them in now, man, because they are in the congregation of the dead. They have forsook their own ways to take on the ways of the heathen, all right? And and by them doing that, all right, they have, you know, continued to to stay separate from Yahweh Hashem Yahusha, which in turn is going to make the Lord destroy you because, like I say, he wants to be worshipped, all right? And you can't worship the Lord in a dead state, man. And the proof of that is this. This is Psalm 65, Sorry, Psalm 6 and 5. It says, For in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave, who shall give thee thanks? Right, so a uh, two-thirds in their dead state, all right, have do not have Yahweh Shem Yahushai nowhere in their minds, man. All right. And because of that, they're not giving the Lord the proper praise that he deserves, man. All right. Here here they are out here. You know, living their lives, giving their glory unto another God, man. All right? What it tells you in the law, in the, in the, the number one law in the Ten Commandments is what? To that, thou shalt not put another God, you know, thou shalt not worship another God outside of Yahweh by Shem Yahushah, roughly paraphrasing. You know, which our people do not do that. For you to be still calling on Jesus Christ in 2020, uh, 2021, Shows you of how our people are still dead, okay? Calling on a Greek title when the let the letter J wasn't even around when our Lord walked the earth two thousand years ago, man. That shows you of how dead our people are, man. Okay, but the Lord is demanded to be worshipped. All right, he is. He is. You know, matter of fact, let me get that. All right. He is looking to see who is going to repent and seek his face, man. Okay. This is, matter of fact, before I get that, let me get this real quick. This is the book of Hosea 5 and 15. It says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. It says, and seek my face in their affliction. They will seek me early. Right, second. Okay. It says, I will go and return to my place today, acknowledge their offense, and seek my face. And in their affliction, they will seek me early. Right, because it says that the Lord is sitting back waiting to see who is going to repent and seek the Lord out, man. All right. His Holy Spirit, you know, is is, is Quickening the spirits of the elect, all right, which we know that quickening is, is coming through Yahweh Shah's words, man. All right, get that real quick. This is the book of John 6 and 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profit of nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life, right? It is the Lord's words that quickeneth our spirit that brought us back to life that that took us out of that dead state and breathed that breath back into us like it tells you in the book of ezekiel 37 man all right so the lord is looking to be worshiped and you can only worship the lord you know when you're uh when, when you've been quickened man all right when you've been given the wisdom knowledge and understanding from the from the spirit of the lord man all right so they they brought us back to life man all right but in doing so, all right, with all this wisdom, knowledge, understanding going out, now the Lord is looking to see who is worshiping him, you know. He said he's sitting back, you know, seeing who will seek his face, man, all right, before the evil days come out, because it tells you in Ecclesiastes 12, all right, to seek the Lord 
in the days of thy youth before the evil days come, which those evil days are fastly approaching. If not already here, well, shit, we're in it. All right. When Esau pretty much openly declaring that he is establishing his new world order, we are in the evil days, man. All right. The days of <clears throat> you putting your whole trust in the Lord and walking out on, on faith, man. The scriptures tell you about, you know, we walk, we walk by faith and not by sight, man. All right. So now was that time to be, you know, uh, really relying on the Lord. And yet two thirds are still bullshitting. They're still, you know, taking the Lord for granted. So that's why he said in their affliction, they shall seek me early, man, because they're going to wait to the absolute last minute and then try to jump on the bandwagon when the Lord is going to do just like in the days of Noah, you know, when that rain starts to come down, they're going to be trying to bang on the door, but the Lord is going to close up the doors and hey, the doors of mercy is going to be closed and locked and, and judgment is going to be going out, man. But he is pretty much, you know, searching, you know, uh, through his, his people to see who is, who is seeking his face, man. All right. Zephaniah 1 and 12. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their leaves that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. And that's the mind state that two thirds have taken. All right. They're chilling. They're at ease because they don't believe that the words that they, that they hear us saying are going to come to pass, but they don't understand the will of the Lord. They don't understand that Isaiah 55 tells you that once the words of the Lord go out, that they're not going to return to him void. So these things that we're telling them, they don't fully believe in it because they don't have the faith that the Lord has given unto us because understand faith is a gift and that gift was not given unto all. All right. The Lord only loved them that dwell up with wisdom. Like it tells you the wisdom of Psalm 7 28. So, the Lord that shows the Lord does not love everybody because he's you know he he told you in Zechariah thirteen and eight that two thirds gotta die man and and the one third is gonna make it through, all right. But the Lord is searching candles. It's like he's searching Jerusalem with candles, all right. And those candles are your spirit, man. All right, let me let me get that to prove that. All right. I believe it's in the book of Job. Give me one second. No, that's not it. It's like it. This is Proverbs 20 and 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. All right. So Yahweh Shem Yahshai said he's searching Jerusalem with candles. All right. So he's looking in the he's looking at the, the different spirits of the Israelites and seeing, all right, who has that 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 mark of it, who, that that mark of an exemption at the why, which goes you know pretty much represents you know us having the knowledge of understanding us having. The Lord's names in our forehead, man. Okay, so two thirds don't have that. That uh, they don't have the Lord in their thoughts, man. All right, they have they have no inclination of the Lord. They don't they don't care to know the Lord, man. And this is why the Lord is going to destroy two thirds because, all right, in that dead state, they're of no use to Him, man. All right, let me get this. This is the book of Matthew 5 and 13. It says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? All right, and that salt represents this knowledge of understanding. Okay, that's what gives us flavor. All right, that's what separates us from the rest of the nations, man. All right, but if you don't have that salt, you know, if you don't have that, that knowledge of understanding, what good are you? As an Israelite, what good are you without the law, statute, commandments of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah? It says, it is thenceforth good for nothing, 
but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. So the Lord says that you're useless to him without you having this understanding. This is why the Lord is going to destroy two-thirds, man. All right? So let me go back to that Zechariah. All right? This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, say of the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. All right? 66.6 .6 of Israelites. One out of... It's like the only... Only one out of every three Negro, Latino, and Native Americans are going to make it. All right. So it says two parts of their end shall be cut off and die, and the third shall be left therein. All right. One out of every three Negro, Latino, and Native Americans are going to be delivered. That's a lot of Israelites that's about to be put to death, man. Verse 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. And try them as gold is tried. And that fire is the afflictions and tribulation that we're going through now, man. That that ultimate uh, uh, trial is going to be that hour of temptation. All right. But the Lord said he's going to bring his elect through that fire, man. All right. It says, and I will, it's like they shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my power. And, this, and the one third, the elect. All right, the 144,000 and the one-third, the one-third consists of, you know, the, uh, the you know, men, women, and children that believe, okay? But it says that the Lord, you know, is going to hear us, you know, when we call upon his name, all right? And he's going to reclaim us as a people again because we, we have acknowledged that he is our power, man, all right? And that's the main reason why the Lord is going to destroy a lot of Israelites, man, because they refused to submit themselves under him, man. All right? Did not Yahweh himself say, you know, those that will not rather be ran over, uh, ran over them, bring them forth, you know, and, and slay them? Roughly paraphrasing. All right? So the Lord is about subjection, man. Okay? It tells you that in Psalms 2, man, to kiss the son, lest he be angry, man. That word kiss goes back to submit. All right? You have to submit yourself under your how about Shem Yahweh Shah because you gotta you gotta submit under a master either way you go, which two thirds have chosen their master, which ultimately they've chosen Satan, which you know which is Esau ultimately which which when you uh, are seeing the choices that our people are making, all right, they're choosing the left hand to submit on themselves under instead of your how about Shem Yahweh Shah. And the Lord's a jealous power. That's why he's gonna destroy two thirds, man. Okay? This is 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 20. Matter of fact, I'm going to go uh, I'm gonna go back a chapter. 2nd Ezra 8 and 1. And he answered me, saying, The Most High have made this world for many, but the world to come for few. All right? And that world to come for few is talking about the kingdom of heaven, man. All right? Because on this side, all right, wickedness is, is, is what rules this world. And so... A lot of our people have taken on the ways of wickedness, man. So this is why I said, man, this is the broad gate, man. Broad is the way to destruction, man, as it tells you in Matthew 7. But the world to come for few because, hey, the, the elect are going to be the only ones that are going to see the kingdom of heaven being built from the ground up, man. All right. But through the loins of the elect, that's how the rest of Israel is going to be repopulated into the earth. And then they're going to be in their right mind. Okay, but right now, two-thirds are going to die because they're enemies of the Lord. Verse 2, And I will tell thee a, a similar to Ezra, as when thou askest the earth, I, it shall ask, it's like it shall say unto thee, that it giveth much mold whereof earth and vessels are made, but little does that gold cometh of, even so is the course of this present world. There be many created, but few shall be saved. And that goes back to what I just said from the sign, man. Only one out of every three Negro, Latino, and Native Americans will be saved. Israel was as the sand of the sea. All right, it's billions of Israelites here on planet Earth. But it says that only one. Really, you know, we're going to really equate it with America. Cause that's where the, the great judge uh, uh, deliverance is going to take place. But, all right, 
all all throughout the world, you're going to see Israel getting delivered as well, man. But the main deliverance is going to be here in the land, uh, land of America, Babylon the Great. But nevertheless, it says only one out of every three Negro Latino Native Americans will be saved, man. It shows you that the Lord, you know, is, is preparing this world, the, the this coming world, for the few, which is the elect, the ones that put their lives on, uh, that put our lives on the line to do this work. Lord willing, that be us, man. All right. That, we, that that us doing this, you know, will will, you know, equate us to being delivered, you know, that we can be, you know, of those few that be delivered, man. All right. This is Second Ezra nine and twenty. So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it, because this great judgment that the Lord is about to unleash. You know, this, this hell the Lord is about to unleash, man. That is for the judgment of two-thirds to be destroyed, man. Okay? So that's that, that great peril that, is, that you know, is coming to the world, all right, which the Lord is allowing to be, you know, uh, uh, pretty much happen through the left hand, which he is using, you know. The main main uh, source of that is Esau Edom, according to Psalms 13, uh, 17 and 13 and 14. But... Scriptures tell you that a sword is being sharpened, uh, it's being furbished, man. And who's that sword being sharpened to? It's being sharpened for, for the two thirds, and for Esau and the heathen, man. All right. All right. So keep going, man. Second Ezra is nine and twenty one. And I saw and spared it greatly, and have kept me a grape of the cluster, and a plant of a great people. Right. That that grape of a cluster is talking about the elect, the remnant. All right. Because hey, you know Israel is a is a great vast people, but the Lord is about to kill a lot of Israelites, man. It says, "Let the multitude perish, then, which was born in vain, and let my grape be kept and my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect." All right, the Lord said, "Let the multitude perish that was born in vain." Two thirds, your life is vain. On this side, because you were born to be destroyed. And you can tell. Look how these niggas live. Their life their lives are meaningless, man. So the Lord is actually doing them a favor by taking them out of their misery, man. Alright. They live a, a lifestyle begging for death anyway. So the Lord is gonna grant them what they asking for, man. Alright? But he said he left he let you know uh he left his elect to be delivered, to be saved, man. All right, because if it weren't for the elect, man, hey, there would be no Israelites to be saved, man. All right, so it, it, it's all the all the while, man, the Lord is showing mercy because He could have got got rid of Israel as a whole and raised up, you know, another nation to to uh, deliver him, or it's like not deliver him to to worship him. If he really want, but because of his compassion for his people and because he's bound by his word. That promise that he made to our forefather Abraham, all right. The Lord, you know, he he's doing all this for our sake, man. Okay, you know. So understand that, a. Hey, even though the Lord is about to kill two thirds, man, that's still an act of love, man. All right, because at the end of the day, like I said, they're gonna come back righteous in the kingdom. They just have to die on this side first, man. All right, because as as you know, as the elect. Like I said, Lord willing, we'll be over that number. All right. We we are pretty much, we have died to this world, man. All right. Let me, let me actually get that. Okay. This is Psalms 44 and 22. It says, Yea, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter, right? So we're we're dead to this world, man. All right. So that fire that we that we're uh, pretty much walking through, man. All right. We we are dead to this world, so that we can gain our lives in the world to come, which is the kingdom of heaven, man. All right. But since two thirds want to, you know, save their lives on this side, this is why they have to die. But like I said, man, the, the through the, the mercy of the Lord. You're still going to come back a king in the kingdom of heaven, man. All right. You're still going to come back as royalty, you know, as Israelites, you know, 
You're going to enjoy the covenant, even though you were wicked on this side, man. You're just going to have to hold your head down in shame for a little while, as it tells you in Daniel's chapter 12, man. But at the end of the day, as you know, as for the elect, all right, we gave up our lives so that we can gain Yahweh by Hashem Shah, man, so that we can gain the kingdom of heaven, man. All right? So two-thirds have chosen their consolation process. This is why the Most High is going to destroy them, man. All right? Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there at. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few be there that find it. Right? So the straight gate is that path of difficulty that we all have to go through in order for us to obtain eternal life, man. That's a that's a walk that many aren't, you know, willing to to take part in. Which really many were the given the opportunity to take part of, man. The ones that were given the opportunity, they they didn't they they didn't have the wherewithal to endure the sufferings uh, that come with this thing, man. But we know that that's part of us counting the cost when we, when we step foot into this truth, man. All right, so, uh, Sirach 2 and 1 tells you to prepare thy soul for temptation when thou come to serve the Lord. So hey, that, that hell, that's part of the walk, man. All right. Hey, losing your life is part of the walk, but we understand that it's for a greater purpose, man. All right. So if you want to walk, if you want to walk in the broad way, you want to walk in the ways of the world, it says that that broad way is that way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in there at, because these people don't want to face the difficulty that it comes with serving the Lord. They they want pleasure, they want they want to win now, man. All right. It says, but it says because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few be there that find it. That's why the Lord said, man, that remnant. All right. All right, the Lord kept a, a a grape of the cluster, all right, of his of a great people, man, a small number, a remnant, a small number, man, he kept to himself. So that that small number is the ones that found life, man. The Lord is always he's always operated with small numbers because that's how he shows his power through those men, okay. So at the end of the day, man. Hey, because two thirds want to choose the broad way, the Lord is going to destroy you in the worst way possible. <laughs> All right, because you are kindling his anger by provoking him to wrath, man. All right. All right, our people knowingly and blatantly blaspheme the Lord. They provoke him by, you know, by hearing that these, these words are true and faithful, and yet they still continue to mock, to scoff. All right, to to disregard, but that's all. It's it's all to their own detriment, though. Okay, because when the Lord finally comes back, all right, he's gonna visit. He's gonna visit that pride, man. Because Jake main thing. Well, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Okay. Okay. Here's how the Lord is gonna judge you. Isaiah sixty six and fifteen. <clears throat> For behold, the Lord will come with fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. Right, because understand, a hey, Yahweh Shai when he comes back, he ain't doing no talking. He did the talking when he walked the earth two thousand years ago. So when he comes this time, man, he's coming with 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 just straight action, man. He ain't doing no talking, man. All right. It says, for by fire and by his sword. Where the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. There's going to be a lot of death, a lot of destruction, okay? Because the Lord is, is, is angry with the wickedness that's going on in this world, man. All right? Our people especially. So best believe when he returns, man, a lot of you niggas is going to die. And rightfully so, because you, you niggas are the worst, man. You are the worst. And for brothers that that's that that camp brothers that deal with this bullshit day in and day out, or just watching our people in this degenerate state, man. 
Hey, we pray that the Lord do these things to these niggas, man. Okay? We don't pray for Jake. Well, we don't pray for two-thirds of Jake. Let me say it like that. Ultimately, because these niggas need death. And then two, which the main reason is the Lord told us not to pray for Jake, man. Because they're gone. All right? Let me get that. Right, this is Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 14. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble, right? And why is that? Because they, they made mockery of the Lord when, when the times that it was meant for them to get it, they didn't want to. They didn't want to get it. They didn't want to hearken unto the Lord, man. They didn't want to, and, and they don't understand that the Lord is, is warning them through His men. But they think because they've been been fooled by you know uh, Roman Catholicism that that hey, the Lord you know operates with them that He can just they they can just go straight to the Most High and, and you know expect the Lord to crack the clouds and deliver a message. No, man. You are being warned right here and now by the mouthpiece of the Lord, which is his prophets, man. All right. So when all hell breaks loose and you getting your ass handed to you, understand that as scriptures tell you in your affliction, you shall seek him early. But because you despise wisdom, you despise the prophets. The Lord's wrath is going to come upon you and it's not going to be nothing. It's not going to be no light thing, man. All right, I'm gonna get this and I'm gonna close it out. Second Chronicles thirty six and fifteen, and the and the Lord power of his father, oh, it's like your power of their fathers, sent to them by his messengers, which is messengers or the prophets, rising up be times and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Now, let me get it in the NLT. It says the Lord power. It's like the, the Lord, the power of their ancestors, repeatedly sent his prophets to warn them, for he had compassion on his people and his temple. All right. So I'm going to read verse 16 back in the uh, King James. It says, But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. All right. So as as you see, as all hell is about to break loose, man, the Lord sent forth his men early. That's what betons mean, early, to warn his people because of the compassion that he has for his, his people. Because the Lord didn't have to do that. He could have just sent the judgment and just wiped out all Israel as a whole. But no, nah, the Lord loved us so much that he He put the Holy Spirit down here upon, you know, start with our apostles and elders, you know, and their apostles, their elders, and on down, to pretty much get this word out to where it's at now, to where you got brothers and sisters waking up all throughout the four corners to to be to be able to repent, so that they have a chance of salvation, man. But two thirds are taking it; they're not taking advantage of what the Lord is giving them. Is giving them, man. All right, they they're using that as an excuse to pretty much provoke the Lord, man. So this is why I said, man. It said, until the, the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. So the Lord's going to be doing a lot of killing. All right? It's going to be a lot of killing out here, man. All right? Matter of fact, there's one more. I'm trying to remember where it's at. Second Chronicles 15 and 13. It says that whosoever would not seek the Lord power of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman, because as an Israelite, your do your whole duty here on this earth, according to Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, is to fear the Lord and to keep his commandments. If you're not doing that, that's what I read earlier in Matthew 5 and 13, that you're good for nothing to be, but to be trodden down under the foot of men. The Lord is going to get rid of you. Because you're of no use to him. Alright? 
You want to continue to stay wicked. You want to continue to 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 put your trust and and praise into everything but the Lord. The Lord is going to destroy you. All right. You are meant to serve the Lord and the Lord. And that's it. Nobody else, man. All right. You are not to be given your honor unto another. All right. The Lord says he is the one true power. There is no God beside him, man. And yeah, you still got two thirds thinking that they that they can worship the Lord on their own terms. No, it doesn't work like that, man. All right. Now is the time to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. All right. And you are seeing that by the men and women standing up for righteousness sake, man. All right. So while we while we prepare, you know, to Lord willing, you know, make it on that spiritual arc. All right, two thirds are are being prepared to be uh put in that slaughter, man. All right. So with that, you know, I pray this lesson was edifying. Until next time, I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, or Kakwadash. Double honor to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught me this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect. Until next time, I say Shalom.